<laughs> Hello and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're watching this video. My name is Anthony Phillips. I am a messenger of God. I give inspiring messages that the Holy Spirit lays on my heart to do. And when I come to preach the word, I preach it in truth and nothing but the truth, the whole truth, and everything else in between the truth. That's the truth. Um, I want to share a message that the Lord had laid in my heart um, about a week or so ago. As I was reading the word, this word came to me. Um, and the word is on God's mercy. Now, I recently did a, a message on God's grace. And you can check that out in my video list on YouTube. But today I'm going to talk about God's mercy. Um, so, in the story that I read when I was reading the Word of God the other day, this word came to me from what I was reading, and that's why I decided to do this message. And the story that I'm going to be reading is found in Nehemiah chapter 9. And in Nehemiah chapter 9, the virus is pretty much paraphrasing, um, repeating what happened in Deuteronomy and, and Exodus and all that, that, about how the Israelites, um, God led the Israelites to the wilderness and fed them manna and brought water out of the rock and everything like that. And they disobeyed God and God was still most of to them and all. So read Nehemiah chapter 9, the full chapter, um, when you get the chance. But the part I'm going to be reading is Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. And if you want to follow along in your Bible, I'm reading the King James Version. Um, um, I'm, I might change a few words, like, to normal grammar, like, from ye to you and thou today and, and this and forth and this forth. But I read the King James Version and the Amplified Version of the Bible that I have on my Bible app in my phone. Um, and every once in a while I read the New Living Translation Version. Um, but most of the time I read the King James Version because it's just, I'm so used to it. And it's really accurate for the most part. Um, but I'm going to read Nehemiah. It's in the Old Testament, a book in the Old Testament. Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. And this is what it says. But they, talking about Israel, and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their nets and hearkened not to God's commandments. It says to thy commandments, but it's talking about to God's commandments. And refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them. But hardened the net, and in the rebellion appointed a captain to return to the bondage. Now, here it is talking about how the Israelites and the fathers hardened their hearts towards God. They, um, they refused to obey God. They, they did not do what God had commanded them to do. Now listen to what God did. Okay? Listen to what it says. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and the great kindness, and forsaketh them not. God did not forsake them. Even though they disobey him, and even though they do not do what God has done to say for them to do. God was still merciful to them. Let's keep reading, okay? Yea, when they had made them a calf, a molten calf, and said, This is thy God that brought thee up out of Egypt, and that brought great provocations. They built a calf, and they call it God, okay? Yet thou in thy manifold mercy, Forsake them not, or forsake them not, in the wilderness, 
the pillow of the cloud departed not from them by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillow of fire by night to show them light, and the way wherein they should go. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withheld not thy manna from their mouth, and gavest them water for the thirst. Yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. The clothes wax not old, and the feet swell not. They, they, the feet do not swell up. In verse 22 it says this, Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into corners. So they possessed the land of Sihon, and the land of the king of Ishbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. Their children also multipliest thou as the stars of heaven, and broughtest them into the land concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers, that they should go in to possess it. One thing we can learn from this passage of scripture and we can see what's happening is although the Israelites and the fathers disobeyed God and they built a calf and they worshiped the calf, the molten calf, the golden calf, and they disobeyed God and refused to obey him, God was still merciful. God still showed mercy towards the Israelites. Even though they did all this stuff. Now there is a message for someone in this word. There is a word for someone in this message that I'm preaching. So I pray that this word is for you. It doesn't matter what you have done. God's mercy still reigns upon you. Okay? God still provided for the Israelites. He provided the manna from heaven, even though they complain about it. God still provided manna. He still provided water for them so that they would not go thirsty. Okay? They, God still provided for them. Now, if you read the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, it does say that some of the Israelites die while in the wilderness. Okay, some some were bit my snakes and um hold on a second spam calls I get all these spam calls and everything else but God still showed mercy towards the Israelites and God is still showing mercy towards you and I yes we sin we fall short of God's glory. We don't always obey the laws. We don't always follow God's commandments. We get it wrong. We mess up. We get so doubtful, so fearful. We worry too much. We fall into sin. We do things we shouldn't do. But God is merciful. God is showing his mercy time and time and time again. God showed mercy towards us when he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. That was demonstration of God's mercy. The scars that are in Jesus' hands and feet and side prove that God loves us so much. So if you are someone who may feel like that God has abandoned you, if you feel like that God is disappointed in you, just know that he's not. He loves you. He loves you unconditionally. Jeremiah 31, 3 says, The Lord loves you with an everlasting love. He showers you daily with his mercy. But you must repent and turn from your sins. Time and time again we read through the Bible about repentance. Jesus said it. John the Baptist said it, his disciples said it, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent, repent, repent. The prophets in the Old Testament talked about repentance. 
We must repent. Come to God. Um, what's the book? Second Chronicles seven fifteen. I'm sorry. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says this: If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I, said the Lord, will heal for them from heaven and heal the land and forgive their sins. You see, we must do our part. God's going to do his part, but we must do our part. And our part is repenting, repenting from our sins, repenting from our wickedness, repenting from our wicked ways. Yes, God is mercy, God is gracious, God is faithful. But just because God is faithful and gracious and merciful does not mean we can live in sin. As it says in the book of Romans, shall we continue in sin because grace abounds? Because we are saved by grace? No, we must repent. We must live a holy life. We must live a godly life. And it is hard. But with God on our side, we can do it. Amen. You must put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross. God's mercy is available to all who call upon His name. Have you called upon the name of the Lord? Romans 10, 13 says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me ask you something. Are you saved? Are you born again? Have you been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? You can't be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. You must have the Holy Spirit or else you will not be a strong Christian. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you would like to know Him, or maybe you have backslidden away, maybe you have strayed away from the Lord, I want you to know that the that you that the Lord is helping you to come back to him if you don't know what to say just say lord please help me i don't know what to do i repent of my sins and i believe that you died and rose again fill me up with your holy spirit and lead me into life everlasting life i place my life into your hands lord and i can guarantee you that if you pray that prayer with a sincere heart god will heal you God will heal your prayer and he will intervene and save your life and he will help you. I know this is true because I prayed the same prayer one time, a long time ago. I said, God, please help me. That's all I pray. And God came down and helped me. He rescued me from the life that I was living in, a life of sin, a life of darkness. I was headed to hell. I was a breath away from hell. But God put me from hell's grip. And gave me a new life. Amen. And I'm a living, walking testimony. That God can change hearts. That God can change lives. Life is changed in God. God is the God of second chances. And third chances. And fourth chances. And so on. So if you don't know Jesus Christ. Come to get to know him today. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Pleading with you to let him in. But only you can open the door. He will not open the door and come in on his own. You must open the door and invite him in. If I came to your house and I knock on the door, I cannot just walk into your house. I have to be invited in. So the same with the Lord. He has to be invited in. And once you invite him in, he will take residence in your heart. And give you a new life. He will teach you all the things that you need to know. He will be in you his Holy Spirit. Who will teach you and guide you. And lead you through life. Because life is hard. Life is tough. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. You're going to have your good moments. You're going to have your bad moments. But God is with you along the way. If you have the Lord in your life. So just understand and know. That God is merciful. He shows mercy and grace to people time and time again, even those who reject him. But you must repent. We all must repent. 
and come to the Lord in faith and believe. I pray that this word encourages you. My name is Anthony Phillips. I love you and God loves you. God bless.